Hello and welcome to another Active Reach technical tutorial video. Um, today we're going to have a look at Sonic Pools and NAT policies and how we can forward traffic uh, coming in on a port on a Sonic Pool and going to a LAN machine such as a web server. So within our topology here we have um, a Sonic Pool which is on a WAN link and behind the Sonic Pool on the local area network there's a machine here which has been set up with a web server web server software running on port 8080. Uh, ignore this sonic call here this is not relevant to this particular demonstration uh, this is just the same topology I've used for some other labs um, but for this particular um, demo this bit here is not relevant we're just looking at this firewall here sonic call firewall 1. So if we just jump onto the machine in question that we set up. This is the, the local machine that we set up which is on 10.20.20.2 uh, .20 and this machine is running, if you have a look at um, a local port scan for port 8080 you'll see that port 8080 is open and is, is a running service on this machine. So it's a simple um, web server that I set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up the Sonic Pool, which is this device here, and we're going to create a NAT policy and an access rule to, to send traffic that hits the WAN side of the Sonic Pool down to that LAN server. Because at the moment, if you're on a machine on the WAN um, and you run a port scan on the, LAN, on the WAN address of the Sonic Pool, which is 192.168.99.199 on that port. Um, why has that not worked? Probably because I've put the IP address in wrong. Let's just try that on the correct address. 96, not 99. Uh, you'll see that we've run a scan on this port and it's come back and it said that that port is closed. So what we want to do is we want to open that port and send it to the correct machine. So the first thing we need to do is create an object for the machine we're trying to send to, and we've already done that. Uh, so within network address objects, I've created an object for 10.20.20.2, a single host on the LAN. And then we need to create a service because we're on port 8080, which is not a standard um, service, uh, that is in uh, here we are, network services, we need to add a custom service for port 8080. There are st um, services set up by default, such as the standard HTTP port 80, but because it's running on port 8080, which is non-standard, we're just going to create one. HTTP 8080 to TCP port and it's just port 8080 and there's our custom port there we go and then we go to net policies and we add our new net policy so we're basically saying The source is any, and we're not going to be translating the, the source. The destination is the WAN address, which is the XOIP. The translated destination, so it's going to hit the original destination of the XOIP, and then we're going to translate it to our LAN host, 10.10.2, and the service is our new service, HTTP. 8080 and we're not translating to anything different you could have it come in on port 80 and translate to 8080 or some other port that you want but we're, we're keeping it the same on the outside and the inside and we don't need a reflexive policy that would just change it so that the same policy existed but for outbound traffic but in this example we don't need that and now we should have our new policy here any original coming into 
Okay, that, that's the wrong, I've chosen the wrong interface IP. We don't want it, to, that's the LAN address of the Sonic. Well, I'll just quickly change that. We want it to be the WAN, which is X1. My mistake, sorry. There we go. So we've now got coming into 192.168.96.199, translates to 10.20.22 on port 8080 and translates to port 8080. And you can see no hits against that. Now if we go back to our, our machine on the WAN and do a, a scan on that address, we can still see that it's closed, but what we should now see is we should see um, a, a hit count against our new net policy. You can see there usage count one. No received bytes and transferred bytes because we haven't actually allowed that tra traffic through the access rule yet. And that just shows that the NAT policy itself is working. But because the traffic is coming from a WAN zone and going to a LAN zone, by default, that traffic is denied by the Sonic Ball. So the Sonic Ball is doing its job denying that traffic. So we're going to add a, um, an access rule to also allow it. So we're going to add from zone WAN to, to that zone LAN, source port any. The service is our. Um, custom HTTP 8080, the source is any, and the destination is the WAN address, which is the X1 IP, not the end host, which sometimes causes some confusion here. It's not the 10.20.22, that's the translated host. The actual original destination that traffic is trying to go to is the IP address, the X1 IP. Now, if you had a range of addresses which was hitting your Sonic call, uh, say if you've got a range of internet addresses which your ISP has given you, um, then of course it doesn't have to be the, 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 the Sonic Call's IP address. It could be another one that you have coming to your service. Um, so that would be specified here, which you would have specified as an object beforehand. But in this case, we don't need to create a new object because it's the same as the X1 IP. And then we're going to click Add. And we can see that new rule there. And now if we go to our uh, port scanning device here, scan it again, you'll now see that it says that port is now open. And if we went to browse to that um, IP, it would give us the directory listing. This is the basic web server that we've got running on that port. And if you now look at the hits against that, because we've run a port scan on it and because we've browsed to it, you can now see hits against that. And likewise, you'll also see hits against our NAT policy. There we go, we can see traffic flowing against that NAT policy. So it's a very common thing, a very common um, task that might be required but for any firewall vendor, but, but certainly for a Sonic call, this would be something quite common if you're a network administrator and you've got a sonic call on the network you've got internet on one side of the sonic call and you've got a bunch of machines or servers on the other side it's very common to have to trans translate or forward ports do port forwarding from traffic that comes into the sonic call from the internet and needs to be um, punted down to a server on your local area network and sometimes you can have one address on the outside of your Sonic Ball, but lots of different servers running lots of different services. And you can use the port translation feature and the NAT policies to, to forward the traffic to the uh, required machine as you see fit. Uh, so hopefully that's been useful to you. Thank you very much for watching.